Good morning, riders. Today is kind of a special day. Right now, I'm heading to the Kawasaki Good Time Demo Tour, hosted by Moms Enfield in Enfield, Connecticut. Not a far drive from me either. Um, as you guys know, I'm a big Honda fan, but uh, I have no, I have no problem with trying out other bikes. Um, some notable bikes I want to try to get to ride today. They have the ZX4RR, ZX6R, the Ninja 1000. They have the Vulcan. I have ridden an, a way older Vulcan, but I want to try out the new one. And maybe the Ninja 650, because my buddy Andy hasn't let me rode his yet. So I just want to see uh, how it compares to my bike, you know. There's also a set of tires I want to try. The ZX6R comes with a set of Bridgestone S22s, I believe. Um, my buddy told me that he swapped to those from two CTs, which is what I have on now. And he gained way more confidence cornering and all that and they're also really good in the wet is what he said as well so i would like to give those a try and if they do do it tomorrow i'd like to give them a try tomorrow as well because it will be raining um but we'll see hey bike boy are oh, far back that way Alrighty, thank you This is one hell of a riding position. Oh, this is one hell of a bike, dude. Holy shit. This is one hell of a fucking riding position. It's definitely got a shit ton of torque. Since this uh this one has a lot of fucking throttle play, which is gonna be a little weird to deal with, but oh she moves. She definitely moves. Very, very responsive. Stock exhaust is interesting. It sounds good under load, but it's just silent. With any bike, you would throw an ex uh, aftermarket exhaust on it, but it just really kind of doesn't display the actual power of the bike. That's fourth from 45, 50. That's a good amount of torque. But Jesus, man, do not take this on a long trip. The only time I've ever felt this bent over on a bike was on a fucking Triumph Daytona. Shifting is very light, but you're still decently confident that I went into the next gear. There's still a good amount of tactile uh, response. First gear up to almost fucking 60 and I short shifted. Holy shit. It's a very tame power band. It's It doesn't have any like super big jumps in torque or anything. It just kind of rolls on it. How's it feel sitting at stoplights? All oh, my ass, all oh, my back. Yeah, this thing just kind of fucking rips. Ooh, we should do a wheelie over the train tracks. No, they said no wheelies. Yeah. This bike is very torquey. You can feel it, even in the mid-range. You know, a lot of bikes like the R6. I don't know about the newer R6, but a lot of bikes like the R6 have always been plagued by a problem of really bad mid-range power. Because I know the older R6 is... You started making your power above 10 fucking grand. So you're just sitting there waiting and then whoop! This has a very smooth power band. Strong at the same time. It's ready for whatever. And for a bike like this, it's not plagued by what I hate, which is an overloading of tech. You only got two extra buttons and you know, the dash buttons too. 
but that's it. They're kind of confusing dash at the at the face of it, but just take a second to understand it and it'll become second nature checking it out. This bike is ready, it's snappy, it's quick. I'm impressed by the ZX6R. I don't know what I was expecting, but I'm impressed. I mean, this is putting you in a race position. You can't do anything but that. Um, if you guys don't have any questions, let's ride. ZX4R. ZX4RR. Because we're in America. Yeah. Rah. So this is the ZX4R, we got similar controls to what the ZX6 has. Looks like we have an extra button over here for select. What do we got? Average speed, total time, battery, miles per gallon, average miles per gallon range, speed. Give me the traction control. I don't want that. This has that quick shift going up and down on it. Sweet, thank you. I was wondering. <laughs> This sounds better than the ZX4 or ZX6. Super far clutch. There we go. Much better. Hell yeah, dude. Okay. I might have been lying. This is not as an aggressive as a sitting position as I told Zach. But this thing is zippy, dude. It's light. Oh my God, it's unbelievably light. Oh my Lord. Okay. <laughs> For a 400, this thing moves! Holy shit! <laughs> this thing feels more torquey than my fucking CBR. It's got 200 less cc's. I did lie about the seating position. The seating position is aggressive for a 400. Very aggressive for a 400, but not as much as the ZX6R. But it is still comfortable. The seats, not rock hard, but definitely not a pillow either. It's a good in-between for a street bike. Oh, it's got a quick shifter. That's crazy! <laughs> so it's got a quick shift up and down. This has a crazy exhaust now. For a stock exhaust? Yeah, crazy exhaust now. But just sitting here cruising, six gear, it's pretty tame. Decently comfortable, I mean, this is more of a performance 400, so it's not supposed to be the best for the road. But it definitely is comfortable if you're looking to use this for commuting and for a weekend bike. But yeah, this thing is fucking fun. I would love one as one of these as like a fucking fuck around bike. Oh, I don't want to deal with my carbs today. Let's fucking ride the ZX4. Hell yeah, man. The suspension feels really good. The stock tires I'm not a huge fan of, but this thing will fucking get down and boogie. Hell yeah, dude! A quick shifter on a 400 is just such a fucking crazy idea to me.
dude, that's fucking good. <laughs> Hell yeah. I was so hyped up to ride this bike and I'm so happy at how it's doing. This is making, this is crazy for a 400. This would keep up with 600s no problem with a skillful rider on it too. If you're going on a fucking twisty ride, no problem keeping up with 600s and maybe even 1000s as long as you don't hit a big straight. This feels planted too. You're in more of an upright seating position but you're still, you know, still leaned over and planted. One thing I like about this, like just like I said about the ZX6R, it is not an overload of tech. I really like this gauge cluster. It puts all the shit you need, nothing you don't, and you can customize it to what you want on there. And there's only one, two, three, four extra buttons. But this thing has a fucking good amount of torque. That's third gear at six and a half. And it's fucking moving. What's up, broskies? Heading to lunch with this guy with a fucking sweet ass ZRX. Chick fil A. Rah, rah. Got the Vulcan, uh, what is this? Vulcan S. I don't know what engine size it is. See, it's cooking though. Oh, it's a parallel twin. Oh, single seat. No passenger seat on this. But uh, it does have some really nice looks to it. I'll do a full walk around when I get back. But uh, really like the way this looks. And it sounds interesting for a V-twin. I don't know what to expect. I don't know what the engine size or power figures are or anything. But uh, unfortunately, the Ninja 1000 was all booked up. So this was the next best thing, I guess. First impressions just sit in here. The uh, seating position is nice. I'm, I'm laid back like a cruiser, but the handlebars, they might be a little too high. Oh, this thing's zippy. The bar position, they just seem a little strainy. Like it's gonna strain my arms, but uh, we'll see. That sounds nice. Okay, this bike moves. This has some really nice power to it. It's nothing crazy, but it'll definitely boogie. This is, I feel like this would do really good on the highway. Peg position's fucking amazing. It's not like too strained, but it's not like you're too low like a sport bike either, or too high. And she moves. It lugs under three grand though. I mean, I guess for a twin, that might be normal. But if you're just trying to put it in a high gear, save some fuel and just cruise, it's kind of, uh, kind of sluggish and annoying. If I could get the bars more towards me, that would be amazing. But that's what aftermarket bars are for. I do enjoy this. This would be great for a uh, going around the town. I don't know much about a longer trip cruiser, but if you got a buddy that lives like 45 minutes away and you, you constantly take trips about that length, this would be great. And of course you could take this on a longer trip. There's just no room for storage or anything like that. It is exceptionally light. It feels like sub 400. If a 400 had a baby with a cruiser, like a Rebel, this is what would pop out. Okay. This thing moves. It'll definitely boogie if you need it to, that's for sure. This bike is just a really easy bike to just get on and cruise. You don't have to treat it like a fucking baby. You could just fucking get on it and just go. It's not going to be the end-all be-all cruiser. It's definitely a great starter cruiser. It's very forgiving. The clutch pull is easy. I'm sure maintenance would be super easy too. And it's not super sluggish like you find with some cruisers. It's a light bike, so it's going to be decently responsive. Not as responsive as something like a Super Sport, but it's one of the most responsive cruisers I've ever ridden. 
the steering even at low speeds doesn't feel sluggish it's easy to toss around if you need to avoid something and it's a it's really it's a really refined bike to be quite honest <sighs> and with the lack of things like cruise control and other technology that would be very useful on a longer trip this makes it great for a commuting bike or something you take out on the weekends and go hang out with the boys at a at the lake another great point for this bike is, is it has longer gears it's more similar to driving a manual car than something like a super sport where it's just clutch in shift clutch out like you have to wait like a half a second to let the clutch out or else it's not going to be smooth so it's very easy to translate if you already know manual on a car. How does your back feel? How does your back feel? Your back. <laughs> I really, really do like this bike. I mean, I like all bikes, but I do like this bike. It is a very comfortable bike the seat's small but it's not small to the, to the point where you're like falling out of it i still feel pretty planted in the seat and i can still control the bike pretty good from just the seat it even has torque down low too i really like that you can just kind of get it, get on it out of any gear if i could only just have the bars back probably about i don't know three inches it would be amazing because I'm kind of hanging on to the bars and arching my back rather than being relaxed like you are on most cruisers. This thing is what, knee height? <laughs> it was really comfortable. If I could have the bars about three inches this way, I would love it. Yeah, right? You got the short arm syndrome? Yeah, yeah. So do I. <sighs> yeah. I do like the color and the looks of it. Yeah. It's a good, it's not good for like super long rides. It's lacking like cruise control and some other tech. But this is meant for like your buddy lives 45 minutes away. You're going to go to his house and then go yeah. for like a two hour ride not and come bad. back. It is not a traveling bike. It is a like leave your house and come back to your house. Anyways, gamers, we are stuck in traffic trying to lane split so our bikes don't overheat. But uh, I had a great time. Had some fun with the bikes. I hope this video really gave some good depth into uh, the bikes. The ZX4RR being the newest and uh, not a lot of people have ridden it yet. So very happy to be able to have the chance to ride that and uh, give my thoughts on it. Anyways, gamers, join my Discord, hang out with like-minded people, follow me on Instagram for more day-to-day -day content, and I will see you guys later.